Okay. Hi, how you doing? Um, we are now going to go over how to get VS Code to work with Java FX. Now, let me tell you, this has been a problem for how many students has this been a problem for, gentlemen? Probably about like half the class, so 15, I'd say. Yeah. yeah I think it's 17, 18. Okay, well, they disagree on this, obviously, but it's a big problem, and it's been a big problem for a long time. So what we're going to do, oh, by the way, I'm Professor Myers. I hope you know that. Behind me are two LAs that are actually very good LAs. We have Sushant Ambadi. Hello. Say, and we have Michael Greenbaum. Hello. All right, and they're going to, they plus I, are going to guide you through this process. So hopefully you won't have the same problems that many students have faced trying to get this environment to work. So we're going to switch off our cameras. We're going to start to show you how this works in VS Code. I'm hoping this is a good video. We're hoping this answers a lot of your questions. It makes life a lot easier for you than these poor guys had it when they took the class and had to struggle through all this stuff. So our learnings are going to become your learnings. So stay tuned. We're going to get started right now. If you've installed VS Code, it doesn't come with much support for Java or Java extension packs. To ensure the rest of the installation goes smoothly, you should have these extension pack, uh, these extensions for VS Code installed. You can do this in the Extensions tab on the left side of VS Code. From here, you want to make sure that you have three extensions installed. First, the extension pack for Java. This is it. As you can see, on our computer, we already have it installed. But if you didn't, you would just click this button here, which would say Install. The next extension you need is called Language Support for Java. Once again, you would install it by clicking this button. The final extension you will need is called Java FX Support. Once you have all three of these extensions installed for your VS Code environment, you should be ready to complete the next steps. Okay, so now we're going to create a new JavaFX project. So when you open up a VS Code, this is how it opens up. And now you click on the Explorer, it says Create Java Project, and select No Build Tools. And now it asks you to select a location. You can select wherever you want to store your Java projects. Usually I would just, right now I would just select uh, temp and then select project location. Now give it a name. I'm just going to say hello three. Hit enter and then it creates a project with the files and also just trust. And now you can see that there is uh, a pre existing file, app.java. And when you click on it, it should run without any problems. And there we go. It says, Hello world. Thank you, Sushant. Now, as you can see, your VS Code is now set up. And there's Hello 3. This is the, the project you just created. And of course, you have the bin for your executable, your class files. And as Sushant mentioned, you have an SRC folder for your source files. What you should be able to tell is that you can see this at the operating system as well. So let me click over here and look at my PC. And I'm going to go to C temp. And look, there's Hello3. That's the file system for that Java project. And now if I open it up, there's bin, lud, and source. I open up source, and there's app.java. All right. Thank you, Professor Myers. Okay, now we do, we open up Chrome and type in Java FX, and it takes you here. Now click on the first link. This is the page that opens up. Scroll down, and you should be able to see download. Click on download, and now, to here, we select the JavaFX version, and you could download the latest version, well, 22, and click on the OS. If you're Windows, click Windows. If you're Mac OS, click on Mac OS. And 
their architecture. Mine is x86, and then I have this option, click download. Once you click download, you will be downloading a zip file, and once that file is downloaded, you extract it. And once you extract it, this is what you're going to see. All right, now we have the JavaFX uh, downloaded. We extract the zip file and move the JavaFX into the Windows C directory. And when you click on it, it will show you the version you downloaded. I have two versions, just ignore that. And, and also, if you look at the versions I have, these are older. So you could have the newer versions and click on one of the versions and move to lib. And you, you can see all these files. These are the jar files that are necessary for us to use JavaFX. Thanks again. Now, to come back to this, we now have JavaFX downloaded. We have it in a special directory that Sushan told you about. But at this point, though, VS Code doesn't know it's there. VS Code is still giving us these red squiggly lines saying, I don't understand what JavaFX is. We now need a way for the compiler to understand the JavaFX libraries, and we're going to have to add them into this project. Michael is now going to show you exactly how you can do that. Hello. To include JavaFX in the project, we can navigate to the bottom of the screen. We can click on Java Projects, and then click on Reference Library, specifically on the plus. From here, we can navigate to uh, the JavaFX installation folder. Thanks, Michael. And now that Michael has referenced these libraries, a couple things. Number one, we can see them here. If I open up Reference Libraries and I scroll down, I will see all those jar files that Michael chose. They're all here. That's great. The other thing you'll notice is, look, now the compiler is aware of JavaFX. So I no longer have any error messages here with my import statements. This is now good. So where are we right now? We can now compile JavaFX. That's a great advance. However, what you need to realize is that JavaFX is running here in VS Code. And VS Code does two functions. Number one, it compiles. And now we can compile because those reference libraries are known. But the second thing that VS Code does is it lets me run the program. I'll try to run the program and we'll see what happens. So here's the run feature. I'll click on it and I'll run it and oh, wow, what does this mean? It says the JavaFX runtime components are missing and are required to run this application. Now that might confuse you, because as you can see, I've referenced the JavaFX libraries right here. So why do we think that VS Code is giving me an error that says the JavaFX runtime components are missing? And what you have to remember is there's a difference between compiling the code and running the code. It says the runtime components are missing. We're going to need to do other steps to actually run this code inside of VS Code. And Sushant will explain how we do that. All right, so now we have this problem to fix it. We do, we go to run and select add configuration, which gives us a launch.json file here in VS Code directory. Now, what we want to do is to copy and paste a line in here. So I will show you here. So this needs to be copied and pasted into the launch.json right after the request. So while Sushant is doing that, a word from me. This is the reason you need to put this in the VMRs. The VMRs are the arguments that VS Code needs to run or execute your program. And so if the VMRs is not aware of your JavaFX libraries, 
then you will never get that message. You always say the components are missing. But now, as you can see, Sushant has pasted that VM args line. And he actually did this to be protected. He pasted it everywhere in launch.json, immediately following the request line. And now we're almost ready to go, but we're going to have to make some changes. Now, we want to make sure that this file path is correct. It is going to be independent of each computer, or it depends, well, it's, it varies for every computer. It's local to computer. So, what we do is, we open the location of the Java effects we've installed, and go to the lib, click on here, and copy, do control C to copy the file path. Now, go back to the VS Code and just copy paste this only here, only in this file path. And make sure you see, you know, you see these errors. Now make sure you correct all these by using forward slash. And this step is really important to the for this to work. Now you jump in. All right. While you want to change the backslashes in the in the path to forward slashes, meaning these ones, you want to make sure that this last slash here stays a backslash. That's because this is not part of the path, but is actually an escape character for this quotation. These two, these two backslashes stay, the rest will be changed as part of the path. So now we have this updated file path. Now we just copy this again and paste it everywhere else we did before. Just like here. And once this is done, do save it. And then now go back to hello world.java and click on run. Now it works. If you could bring back that, uh, that, that configuration file, launch.json, I just wanted to point out to everybody that this is very sensitive. If you have spaces in your, um, in your directory for pathway, that can cause problems. As Michael mentioned, if you don't have the escape slashes in front of the double quotes, that could cause problems. Uh, if you don't have a comma at the end of the line, because it's one set of key value pairs, that can cause problems. And I also want you to observe something. I want you to observe javafx.web. That component is going to be needed for certain JavaFX programs that use a web control. And also, just to make sure that there are no spaces right after here. If you notice, this is really important. If you have spaces, it's not going to work. It's case sensitive again. Also, be sure to save the file once you change it. We, use, we did that using Control S. All right, so now we have this working JavaFX project. You should note that this works on Windows, but not on Mac. For people who have Mac, just like me, I would just point out to one simple thing that makes your Java project working. So if I go to the notepad and look at this, the VM args I pasted for the Windows is this, and for the Mac, this. So if you notice, we, on Mac there is no C directory or any other direct directories. We only have like users and the Mac register to and the desktop. So usually just use the file path that you have installed on your Mac and make sure this is the file path you put in. And remember, no double quotes are nothing for a Mac. But everything else stays the same, right, Sushant? Yes, and everything else stays the same, and except for this. And if you put your file path on your Mac, you would be good to go. And that's it. Now you've seen how to use VS Code and how to make a JavaFX project both compile and run in that environment. And 
On behalf of myself, Michael, and Sushant, we hope this video was very useful to you. And thanks for tuning in.